Okay, to start the zoo task, we know that we need to use an array list to do it. So we might as well start by creating an array list. Um, our array is going to store a list of names, names of the animals. So it'll be an array list of strings. Uh, we can call it something useful like animal names. Uh, we can see it's appearing in red. That's because we're missing an import statement. Okay, we can add that import statement manually at the top, or uh, we'll also be prompted uh, once we continue to uh, automatically add it. So you can see here, it's just asking us to press Alt and Enter, and that's added this import statement at the top. Uh, so we're creating a new array list of strings. Uh, uh, we won't specify initial capacity at this point, so we just create it like that. Um, now we're going to be asking the user for some uh, input for each of the names, um, and to do that we're going to use a scanner. So we can create a new instance of the scanner. I'll call this one input scanner. Again, we need to add the import statement at the top. So we could type that manually or we could use the keyboard shortcuts as we've just done to add that in. Okay, and that's obviously a new scanner and that's using system.in to get the uh, input. Okay, now collecting the data, we want the user to uh, be able to type as many names as they need. Um, so essentially we want a loop that runs indefinitely Okay, we can do that with a while loop, and if we set the while loop condition to true, it will in theory never uh, terminate. Now we can obviously terminate the loop using a break clause, which we'll get to later. Um, but uh, what we need to do in the loop is ask the user uh, to type the name, um, and then we'll collect that name and add it to our array list. So uh, we can use the SOUT shortcut to get a system.out.println. We can print a message to the user please enter uh, an animal name. Okay. Uh, we then read that data in, so we can get our new animal name uh, by using the scanner to get the next line. And what we need to do is add that to the array. Now, um, we do have a uh, concern that we don't want the same name being added twice. So put simply, the code to add the name would be this. We, ask, we get our animal names array list, we use the add function and we add the animal name. Okay, but as it currently stands, that would allow us to add the same animal name multiple times. So what we can do instead uh, is to create an if statement and check that the animal names array uh, doesn't contain that particular name already. Now I'm looking to see if it does contain, uh, so we can put our animal name variable in there. If it does contain it, then we want to print out a message to the user saying uh, this name has been taken. Try again. Um, and if uh, it hasn't, if it doesn't contain it, we can put that logic that we've already written into an else statement. Okay, so we'll add another message in here. Sorry, that name has been taken. That's all well and good, but we've got two problems. One is that we uh, can't yet exit the loop. Uh, and the second is we don't actually provide the list of names uh, once they've finished entering them. Okay, so the first problem is how do they get out of the loop? Well, um, we want them to type something that we can interpret rather than being an animal name uh, as a, an option to exit. So we could change our prompt to say, please enter an animal name uh, or type exit uh, to finish. Okay. We still read that in. We want to add a, an additional if statement here, just to make sure that the animal name uh, is not, um, or if it does equal exit. So if the animal name equals, remember when we compare strings, we use dot equals rather than two equals signs. Exit, and then we write some logic, which will simply break the loop. So at this point, if some user has typed exit, uh, we'll leave. Um, just to make it a little bit more uh, user friendly, because they might type exit with capitals or an E, we might convert the animal name to lowercase first. So we'll do animal name to lowercase, and then if that equals exit, which is in lowercase, then we'll leave. So no matter what combination they type, we'll be able to uh, get out of the loop. The final thing that remains is to print the list of animals. So again, we want to iterate through all of the animals in the array. We could use either a for i or a for each loop. A for each is slightly simpler, given we don't need the index of the animal that we're outputting. So we could let's say for each uh, name in animal names, and we will print out those names. 
so in this case it's just name okay and maybe in addition we'll have a little heading that says all names okay so that should be the extent of our code we can run it and test it Uh, so we might have, um, uh, let's say we've got Neo the Lion, uh, and we can actually see we've got an error in our code, okay, it's telling us that name has been taken. So what we need to do here is to check the logic for that. Uh, we can see that it says if our animal name contains the animal name, um, and actually we've, we've, been, uh, we've made a slightly minor mistake here in that we're actually checking if the name, rather than the list of names, which is what animal name contains it, which it will. If we modify that so it's animal names, so we're actually checking if the array contains the animal name and not the animal name itself, which is always going to be a match, um, then it should work. So we will uh, stop that and run it again. Try that out. Okay, so we've added Leo, um, we could add Tony the Tiger. Um, and we could add uh, Freddy the Frog. Okay, we could obviously continue, but we want to leave, so we'll type exit. At this point, we get our animal names, header, and the three animals.